the day of Pentecost, lesson four on the book of Acts. We are now doing a study, continuing the study on the book of Acts via Zoom. Uh, and we've had several of these sessions already. You're welcome to join us on Zoom. If you want to know more, let me know. And uh, let me just pray before we get into the lesson. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come to you right now. And we thank you, Lord Jesus, that you are the baptizer in the Holy Spirit, that you are the one that poured out your Holy Spirit uh, from the day of Pentecost till now. We are learning from you, Lord Jesus. And so we ask that your word will be open to us. Holy Spirit, teach us the word of God, that we can walk according to your word and do what you want us to do in these days in the name of Jesus. This is an important time for us to know how to walk in the power of the Holy Spirit in Jesus name. Amen. So the day of Pentecost was a very, very powerful day. Pentecost means 50. It is 50 days after the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. In the Old Testament, in Leviticus and, and some of the other places in, in, in the um, like Exodus and Numbers and Deuteronomy, uh, the Feast of Weeks is, is spoken of. It is one of the major feasts that had to be celebrated. There was three feasts that the, the uh, people had to celebrate, the people of Israel, Passover, uh, 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 um, the Feast of Weeks, which is Pentecost, and the Feast of Tabernacles. The Passover was fulfilled in the Lord Jesus as he died for our sins on the cross, was buried and raised on the, on the third day. And next week we will celebrate that uh, as um, all over the world that will be celebrated during uh, the, the week of Passover. And then also uh, the Feast of Tabernacles will be set, will be fulfilled, even though we need to celebrate it still, but it, it will be fulfilled in the Lord Jesus at his second coming, when he will stand on the Mount of Olives, as it says in, in Zechariah 14. But Pentecost, the Feast of Weeks, was fulfilled on the day of Pentecost. And in, in Leviticus uh, 23, I believe it is, uh, you'll see it there in your notes. It says there, that after the, 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 they celebrated the Passover. Passover was celebrated for a whole week, but then there was the specific day that the Passover lamb was, was um, uh, slaughtered and, and sacrificed and, and, and celebrated. And then it says the Sabbath, it ends with the Sabbath, the festival. The next day after that festival, which is the first day of a week, that day is the first fruits, uh, feast of first fruits, or the celebration of first fruits. The Lord Jesus was the first fruit out of the grave. He was the first one that was resurrected. He is the first fruits. And from that day, they had to count 50 days and have a, a, a holy convocation, a, 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 a coming together as the people in Jerusalem to celebrate the harvest, the first, the, the beginning of the harvest. And so Pentecost is a harvest festival, and that's why it's Pentecost 50 days. So the Lord Jesus, after his resurrection, appeared to his disciples for 40 days. We did that in the first lesson, the 40 days of glory. Then he ascended into heaven that we did in our second lesson. Uh, on the ascension, how the Lord Jesus ascended to heaven. And uh, now, and then we looked at, at, at what the Lord Jesus said about the comforter that will come on the day of Pentecost. And now the day of Pentecost is upon them in the book of Acts and is being fulfilled, that prophecy. So there were many pilgrims from all over the world of uh, all over the Roman Empire that had come. So so there were either people that stayed over from the time of, of Passover or that have now come specifically for Pentecost. So the city was full of thousands upon thousands of visitors from all over the Roman Empire, Jewish believers and 
converts to Judaism. At the same time, the 120 for 10 days had been praying and waiting in the upper room because the Lord Jesus had instructed them to wait for the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, for the baptism in the Holy Spirit. They didn't know what that would look like. They didn't know how they would experience that, but they knew they had to wait. And there was 120 believers in the upper room, 12 of them, the 12 apostles and the rest of the 120. And the upper room is like in the Midwest, you're in the, in the U.S., uh, many houses have basements that there are a whole big room that that is not divided up uh, and in in uh, the upper room really is kind of an upside down or, or right side up basement in the sense that the basement now is on top of the house instead of at the bottom and now it's the upper room it's a, un, a you know a undivided room uh and they, they would sit in this room on the floor and 120 disciples were in this house uh, waiting for the outpouring of the Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost. And then came the mighty rushing wind. And wow, this must have sounded like a tornado coming through. The, 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 the Lord Jesus from heaven blew the Holy Spirit. Remember in, in, in John 20, Jesus blew on them. It was prophetic pointing to the day, day of Pentecost. And now on the day of Pentecost, he is blowing from heaven, having received from the Father, the, the, the Holy Spirit, the promise of the, the Father, the promised gift of the Holy Spirit. And as the Lord Jesus, from his place of being glorified at the right hand of the Father, he pours out the Holy Spirit and he blows on the 120 disciples. And the mighty rushing wind comes in Psalm 104, verse 3 and 4. You can go and read that and it's in your notes also. Uh, it, it says that that um, he, 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 he walks on the wind. He makes the wind his messengers and his, 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 his servants flames of fire and that day the wind blew the his messengers came in in the name of jesus and and now the fire fell you see john the baptist said that the lord jesus will baptize us in the holy spirit and fire okay and he was he came in the spirit and power this is John the Baptist came in the spirit and power of Elijah. And it is so fascinating that he was dressed just like Elijah uh, in, in, in a, uh, he wore camel's hair. It says in, in, in second Kings one that, that uh, Elijah wore a, 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 a garment of hair and a leather belt, just like John the Baptist would later do. Wow. All right. And so, Elijah had gathered all the Baal priests and he, he said, the God who answers by fire is God. And still today, the God who answers by the fire of the Holy Spirit is God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And um, so the fire fell there on that altar and consumed the, the, the sacrifice and the altar. Also in, in Second Chronicles 7, I would encourage you to read the first few verses there in Second Chronicles 7 and to see how as the, the uh, Solomon's temple was dedicated and Solomon had prayed for the Lord to, to dwell in, in that temple and to make that his footstool. And, and so, the, the glory of the Lord came and filled the house, the temple, so that the priests could not stand. And then the fire fell from heaven and consumed the sacrifices. The Lord answered with fire and the people bowed down on their knees on the pavement and worshiped the Lord. And so now there's still a temple in Jerusalem. 
at that time of the day of Pentecost. But the fire does not fall on the altar at the temple, but the fire falls on the 120 small temples in the upper room. And that cloud of glory that, that was in the temple, now that cloud of glory comes and filled each one of these temples. When you get baptized in the Holy Spirit, the fire of the Holy Spirit comes upon you and you, the cloud of glory comes to live on the inside of you. The Holy Spirit. Wow. Hallelujah. That is so powerful. And so, so I believe, even though we don't read in the rest of the, the book of Acts, the physical manifestation of the fire and of this glory in this way. But I believe every time we read of the baptism in the Holy Spirit, all through the book of Acts, those people were touched by the, the same fire. Even though it was not physically evident, it spiritually definitely was. Hallelujah. And so it is still for today. And then, uh, so now these, oh yes, and then they spoke in tongues. And tongues is very strange. But, you know, when they spoke in tongues, uh, it, it, we must consider this, that Jesus is the one who told them that they would speak in tongues. Many people don't realize this, but in Mark 16, verse 17, Jesus said, these signs will follow those who believe in my name, in the name of Jesus. They will drive out evil spirits and they will speak in tongues. It is in the same conversation as when Jesus told them, you will receive power. Acts 1, eight, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you and you will be my witnesses. It's in the same conversation that Jesus, right before he ascended to heaven, that he tells them this, that they will speak in tongues. And so on the day of Pentecost, those words of Jesus started to be fulfilled. And from that time on, whenever the Holy Spirit would come upon people, they would start to speak in tongues, just as Jesus said. Hallelujah. Now, the 120 is in the upper room. As the Holy Spirit is falling, it is nine o'clock in the morning. The pilgrims are on their way to the Temple Mount because They've come for the festival, and this is the day of the feast, the main day of the feast. They are all at, at that time, because it's the time of, the pr of prayer and of the sacrifices, they are on their way to the Temple Mount. And on the south side of the Temple Mount, there was uh, uh, Herod had extended the Temple Mount, and that's why you have these huge walls that still are standing there today. That is not the temple. That is just the Temple Mount. The temple was built on top of that uh, um, uh, uh, mountain. Uh, and he, Herod had extended it because of all the pilgrims. And he had built these uh, walls. And then they were uh, from underneath on the south side. There were do uh, doorways open and steps leading inside through t tunnels up to the Temple Mount. And in front of that uh, wall on the south side, there was a set of steps that people would climb up to get to the gates where they would enter. And in front of those, those stairs, there was a plaza that Herod had made. Um, and then from there is the stepped path down to the, um, the Pool of Siloam that last year uh, on the 4th of July, 4th of July was um, opened up and, and, and made known to the public that they had, had, had found it again. Now it's in a tunnel because, the, you know, since then many things have been built over it, but that, that, those steps are there all the way down to the Pool of Siloam. So the people, the pilgrims would have uh, done their ceremonial washing at the Pool of Siloam and they would have walked up to the, uh, those steps and from all sides where they would have had their ceremonial washings in, in, in mikvahs, they would have come to the Temple Mount. 
And as they're coming towards the Temple Mount, the Holy Spirit fell. They hear this mushing, mighty rushing wind and fire that falls. And now the 120 is driven out by the Holy Spirit out of that upper room into the street. And now see these exuberant, ecstatic uh, 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 believers full, just freshly baptized in the Holy Spirit, running maybe with their hands in the air, shaking, babbling in tongues, just exuberantly, ecstatically, with joy, running towards that, the, the Temple Mount, running towards that plaza. And they intersect this 120 exuberant people full of the Holy Spirit, speaking in tongues, shaking under the power of God, um, looking like drunk people because the people say, what is this? What means this? They were amazed. This is where they intersect with the crowd and the crowd is stunned by these people. What is going on here? And Peter goes and stands on those steps. And that's when he addresses the crowd. And he has to, to address them first by telling them, these people are not drunk as you suppose. Because obviously they were acting very, very strange. Okay? And still today when people get baptized in the Holy Spirit, sometimes the Holy Spirit does strange things to people. Uh, as much as people want it to be very orderly and uh, and controlled and whatever, we cannot control the Holy Spirit when He does these things. Sometimes it is strange looking. <laughs> it's just how it is. And we have to settle with that. Yes, are there excesses? Are there people that are, are out there and, and taking it too far and whatever? That does happen. But... Many times when the Holy Spirit, last night we prayed for some people that have never been in a, in a, in a, in a Pentecostal meeting, or charismatic meeting, never been around the things of the Holy Spirit. This was over Zoom as we were releasing the We taught them on the baptism of the Holy Spirit. As we were releasing the baptism of the Holy Spirit, one lady fell down in her house. Nobody, she's never seen this. Nobody's touching her. She fell down under the power of God, uh, she's crying out and, and speaking in tongues and shaking under the power of God. Wow. So, uh, you know, this kinds of stuff happen even still today. Hallelujah. And so Peter now addresses the crowd and he says, this is that which was spoken spoken by the prophet Joel, and he starts quoting from, uh, from Joel 28, uh, sorry, not Joel 28, Joel 2 verse 28 onwards. And he, uh, he, he speaks of how the Holy Spirit would be poured out in the last days. He says, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. And, and he says, your sons and daughters will prophesy and dream dreams. And on my both my maidservants and men servants, I will pour out my spirits. And then he says, I will show wonders in the heavens and signs on the earth below, blood, fire and bellows of smoke. And everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. The purpose, just as Jesus said, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you to be my witnesses. Yes, uh, that is exactly what, what was prophesied, that the purpose of the baptism in the Holy Spirit is that people will hear the gospel and call on the name of the Lord Jesus and be saved. Okay? And so, so uh, this fulfills many prophetic words, and you will see that list there in your notes from the Old Testament. Go and read all those prophetic words that are being fulfilled on the day of Pentecost from the Old Testament that was prophesied about an outpouring. And, and uh, Joel says in, uh, afterwards, meaning after the Lord Jesus will be raised from the dead, the Holy Spirit will and ascends to heaven. After that, the Holy Spirit will be poured out. But now Peter says in, in the last days, the last days started on the day of Pentecost, continues till the Lord Jesus comes. We are in the last days, maybe in the last of the last days, but we're in the last days. 
And it, we, we are part of that outpouring that started on the day of Pentecost. Okay? It is, the promise is still for us. And then uh, the people's hearts were cut. And they said, brothers, after they heard Peter preaching, they said, brothers, what must we do? He said, repent. Repent means to turn from your sin, to turn to Jesus in faith and, and submit to him as your Lord and Savior and receive him as your Lord and Savior. Uh, that is to be born again, to repent. Secondly, to be baptized in the name of Jesus for the forgiveness of sins. That is baptism in water. You have to be immersed in water. And the third thing that he tells them is receive the Holy Spirit. So uh, he says, this promise is for you, for your children, and for all whom the Lord still will call. In other words, this that call went out and it is continued up to today. Hallelujah. And so it is receiving the baptism in the Holy Spirit. Remember, the promised gift of the Holy Spirit is always the baptism in the Holy Spirit. We have to receive the Holy Spirit. So all three of these things we will see in the book of Acts is repeated over and over and over. And that is the pattern we need to follow. Get people to repent, to be, become born again, to get saved, um, to get baptized in the Holy Spirit, speaking in tongues, and to be baptized in water. And on the day of Pentecost, 3,000 respond to the gospel. And after they repented and, and prayed to receive Jesus, the second th after they called on the name of the Lord, the second thing, they, they probably laid hands on them to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. Okay? And, and, and they started speaking in tongues. The 3,000, 120 was ministering to them. And then the 120 had to baptize 3,000 new believers that day. They probably used the Pool of Siloam. There were also these mikvahs. A mikvah is, is, a, is a pool uh, that, that, is, you, that has steps. You go into it, and the, what they would do, uh, because you could not go to the temple without being ceremonially clean, and so you had to go into this mikvah, and it was not to wash yourself on the outside, really. It was to wash the, you, you spiritually on the outside from all the dirt of the Gentiles. <laughs> um, so every one of us that are not a Jew, we would have been part of the ones that they wanted to wash off. Um, okay? And, and this was their ceremonial washing. But now those same pools probably were used, not for ceremonial washing, but to wash and cleanse the inside and to surrender to Jesus, to be baptized in his death, his burial and his resurrection. Hallelujah. And so the day of Pentecost started with the mighty rushing wind and it ends with this Powerful baptism, huge baptism of 3,000 new believers. And now my final point in this lesson. Uh, on the day of Pentecost, there was, you see that list there in Acts 2 from all the nations. There were people from, from um, the Iran area, from Kurdistan, from Iraq, from uh, Arabia, from e Egypt uh, and Libya, and all the way, the whole no North um, uh, Africa, and then all the way around into Turkey and, and, and some of those areas. And so that whole region and all the way to Rome. So they were uh, uh, Jewish uh, uh, people from all those areas were there and they were getting saved baptized and baptized in the Holy Spirit. And some of them might have stayed in the church, but many of them went back to where they came from, took the gospel and the baptism in the Holy Spirit, the message of the Lord Jesus, and churches were planted from the day of Pentecost into those nations so that the, the message of the day of Pentecost is missional into the nations into the nations you cannot be pentecostal charismatic spirit filled and have just this small minded mentality of it's just about us here where we are just it's just about my life i'm glad i'm speaking tongues no we must have a missional attitude into the nations that was the day of pentecost
And we have proof that it happened because um, some of the believers went back to Rome. Then in Rome, we find out later that uh, uh, um, Claudius kicks out all the Jews. There would have been also the believing Jews who have now become believers. And the church that was there was kicked out of Rome. They fled Rome and we find a couple that was part of that group of Jewish believers. We find in Acts 18 in Corinth and Paul comes there. He finds this couple, Priscilla and Aquila. They were already believers. So they must have got saved in Rome from the people that got baptized in the Holy Spirit on the day of saved and baptized and baptized in the Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost and took the gospel to Rome and planted the church there. And so Priscilla and Aquila becomes one, one of Paul's apostolic team. They go with Paul to Ephesus. They plant the house church there in Ephesus. And then later on, Paul take, sends them with a team back to Rome and, and to go and plant the church in Rome. And he, he writes the letter to the Romans to that a church that Priscilla and Aquila went back to start again. And so, yes, it's into the nations. And so let me pray for you that what happened on the day of Pentecost, that we will walk in the fire of Pentecost. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for everyone watching this video and going through this study, that they will be be touched by the fire of the Holy Spirit that in their house right now, wherever they are watching this, that the fire of the Holy Spirit will fall upon them and that they will be touched by the fire of Pentecost, that the wind of the Spirit will come upon them, that you will blow on them, Holy Spirit, Lord Jesus, that, and that they will be filled with the cloud of glory on the out inside. And when when this time of of of, of uh, lockdown for the coronavirus is over, that they will be th thrown out of their upper room in the name of Jesus into the streets, into their community to proclaim the gospel with power and into the nations in the name of Jesus. And so we thank you for this in Jesus name. We give you all the glory, Lord Jesus, baptize people, teach us and thank you, Holy Spirit in Jesus name. Amen.